boxing truth here. It's a video about Demetrius Andrade. Didn't really get the chance to talk about the HBO card this past weekend in Verona, New York. It was a weak HBO card. The ratings presented that it was one of the weaker cards HBO has presented this year. You had guys you never really heard of, not much name recognition. I've never seen Machado fight. Only seen Atlantic's Fox fight. Those were the B side opponents in this HBO card, and it was the only upset that occurred this weekend. And it was kind of a bullshit win in Machado when he landed a good shot on Corrales dropped him, and the referee had one of the most quickest counts I've ever seen. It was a bullshit count, bullshit stoppage. Another bad stoppage in the long list of bad stoppages this year for boxing. Bad stoppages are hindering the sport. It's taking away credit from the, the victors. It's putting in a lot of controversy, and it's making the fights results it's taking away the result so let's talk about the co-feature Demetrius Andrade this is what this video is about and how Andrade has very been disappointing his last couple of fights Boxing Truth is not impressed Andrade has had two very weak performances type of performances that are not going to wow any crowds wow any viewers Certainly not going to get anybody clamoring for Andre to eventually fight Canelo Golovkin with those type of weak performances. Sure, Fox was a very tall, rangy guy. Six foot five presented some problems. He's a guy that likes to back to box, use distance, but he had a wounded fighter in front of him in the Demetrius Andre. Now people want to trash Fox performance. But obviously something wasn't right. He injured his shoulder in the first round, tore his rotator cuff, and that's the big reason why he wasn't as active with his punches. He was hurt. Torn rotator cuff, very difficult to fight with. It's gonna hinder your performance because you're gonna feel pain every time you throw a punch. So, it was bad luck for Atlantic's Fox. Honestly, he was a live dog in this fight. He was a stylistic nightmare, could present a lot of problems, and had he not injured his shoulder, he would have given Andre even a much tougher fight, would have made it much more interesting, would have let his hands go more, he would have threw more punches. And Andre, he, despite a wounded opponent, an injured opponent, he still really couldn't do much, was not impressed, outpointed Fox, did, he did win the fight, but... Not as dominant as HBO would like you to believe. It wasn't a dominant performance. He just went with the motions, did what he could with the style that was presented in front of him. Couldn't really do much damage. Couldn't really beat Fox up. Fox, unfortunately, just wasn't 100% after that first round. Unfortunate. His biggest fight, he hurts his shoulder in the first round. But he didn't get beat up, he didn't get embarrassed, and he actually hung in there with Demetrius Andre. You can argue Fox won maybe four rounds in the fight. Andre won the fight clear, but it wasn't impressive, it wasn't explosive, it wasn't something that you really want to see again. And this is the second straight performance that Andre has had that has been very weak. He had an opponent in Jack Colcave in Germany this past March, an opponent that it's aggressive that comes forward and Andre really didn't look impressive in that fight either. So what's going on with Demetrius Andre? He hasn't looked that good since the Willie Nelson fight. You can't say it's inactivity. He fought this past March. It was a seven month layoff, okay. It was a very, very tall rangy opponent, okay. But it was an opponent that wasn't able to bring out his best because of the injury. Which is why he only threw less than 400 punches in the fight. So, is Andrade really, is he really this fighter that's has all this talent, 
hasn't been able to bring it out because of promotional problems, because of bad business decisions. Is he really that good? Is he an elite talent? Or do these shaky performances in back-to-back fights, do they present a... Do they present Andre as simply being not in the level of Canelo Golovkin? Is Andre really on the level of Canelo Golovkin? Judging from these two performances, no. You can't say that he is. You can't say he's a legitimate threat to either of those guys from what we were seeing. He couldn't even do much against Atlantic's Fox. Barely buckled him. Didn't really hurt him. Wasn't close to getting him out of there. And Fox is a pretty good fighter, but it has nowhere near the experience of what he was fighting that night in Andre. Andre had more experience, fought better opposition. But who knows? Had Fox and Andre his shoulder, maybe Andre wouldn't have gotten away with a with an unimpressive, unanimous decision. Maybe it could have been a a decision loss had Fox been able to had Fox not injured his shoulder after that first round but going forward Andre needs to be a lot more impressive he needs to have more entertaining performances it was a very dull fight not very entertaining not very impressive not much firepower Andre's got to show another level if he wants to beat a Canelo or Golovkin. But there is a <clears throat> barometer that should be taken in the middleweight division. On how, how good you can be, how much of a test you can be to the elite guys in the division, which is Canelo and Golovkin. So who should Andre, which is with his three-fight HBO deal, fight next? Who can he fight? Now that he's vacated his 54-pound regular title in WBA, he had to do it. There was no direction at 54 for him. He couldn't get any fights. Lara blatantly ducked him. So, he needed to move on. Start making some money. Start getting some exposure. So why not fight? sign this three-fight HBO deal? So who can he fight for his next fight? There are a couple of guys I want to see Andre fight before he fights Canelo or Golovkin. I need to see how good he is. I need to see how this new weight division is going to be for him. I wouldn't mind seeing Andre fight the winner of Lemieux Saunders. Whether he can get that fight remains to be seen. Wouldn't mind seeing Andre take on Danny Jacobs. But... It's going to be tough for Andre to get these fights. I'm sure he's going to get a high rating within the WBA rankings in the middleweight division since he's vacated his regular strap. He might get a, a high rating as high as number two. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing Andre fight Ry- Ryota Murata, the guy that just beat Endom in the rematch over there in Tokyo. Andre will have to be the mandatory to his strap he would have to be the mandatory to get a lot of the fights. Golovkin. I mean, is Canelo willingly going to fight this guy when there's other options on the table? So even though he's got this three-fight deal, it's going to take some doing to, to entice some top middleweights to fight him. One, he's not the biggest name. Two, he's got a difficult style. But three, he hasn't been the most entertaining. So Andrade still has a long road ahead of him. Still hasn't fully gotten out of that that hump where he's on the verge of big and lucrative fights. It's been a struggle, man. He he fucked up. He should have just fought Jermel Charlo for 400 400k whatever he was offered. And then now instead who, I mean, who knows what would have happened? I probably would have picked Andre to beat Jermel at that time. But he pulled out of the fight, and as a result, the Charlo brothers have surpassed him in popularity and 
recognition, and Andrade is still struggling to get fights, fighting on HBO undercards, and not looking good in them. Not looking sensational. So, there's still some doing needs to be done for Andre's career. He's on the verge of 30. He'll be 30 in February of next year. And it's just been an unfortunate career. This career of Andre signifies that he's just not going to be that guy that we all thought he could be. He was a hell of an amateur, a world champion in 2007. Made the Olympic team was one of the promising talents at 52. Finished as the number one 52 pounder in the country. Defeated Keith Thurman a few times as well. His credentials as an amateur are much more impressive as a professional. It's just been an unfortunate career. And after this latest performance, you can definitely say that Demetrius Andre is not on the level of Canelo Golovkin. This is Boxing Truth. I'm out.